we've discussed here the use of stem cells and various regenerative properties of stem cells. Now, we want to talk about the possibility of activating the stem cells that are, that are, are already in the host. Um, activating stem cells using pharmacological means, so through drugs. Now, how would one go about finding agents that are capable of activating stem cells? Well, first you have to figure out what is the stem cell type that you are interested in, what kind of tissue. And then one way is to look at how that tissue is developing embryonically, what kind of signals are being given to tell the, uh, the tissue to become what it becomes. And then you would take those um, different chemicals that are involved embryonically and synthesize them or make analogs of them and administer them into an animal model of the disease or an uh, animal model of injured tissue and see if it can activate the stem cells to heal that tissue. So in this particular case, the situation of diabetes was assessed, was looked into. And in diabetes, as we discussed before, the problem is uh, death of the beta cells that produce insulin. So what the investigators did is, first they looked at what kind of hormones and what kind of growth factors are involved in pancreatic development. And they chose two agents, number one being gastrin, a peptide hormone, and number two, number two being epidermal growth factor, EGF. And they gave these chemicals two times a day for two weeks to mice which naturally develop diabetes. These mice are called NOD mice, non-obese diabetic mice. As you can see in the figure, on the y-axis is the glycemia, the amount of glucose in the blood, and on the x-axis is the time. Now you can see the control animals, all of them became diabetic. Animals which received, which received the EGF, some, there was some level of protection. Gast, uh, animals which received gastrin, also there was some level of protection from glycemia, but animals which received the combination of gastrin plus EGF, there seemed to, all the mice except one were completely protected from diabetes. So now what the investigators wanted to do is to, um, to look inside the animals and to see, to see what exactly is going on. So um, the animals were treated either control or with gastrin alone, EGF alone, or the combination, treated for two weeks, and then the level of insulin was assessed, and the, uh, by, in histology it was assessed because the mice were sacrificed either five weeks after the end of treatment or ten weeks after the end of treatment. Five weeks being in black, ten weeks being in the white bars. As you can see, the, only the, uh, primarily the mice which received EGF and gastrin, there was significantly higher amounts of beta cells. But what's even more interesting, I mean uh, significantly higher amounts of insulin in the beta cell. But what's even more interesting is that the, the, the mice that were sacrificed at 10 weeks after stopping the treatment, those ones had more insulin production, implying that, that there was a regeneration going on, whereas in the controls there was destruction and you couldn't find or you found very minimal um, insulin. When you do the same approach, but instead of looking at insulin, you look at the beta cell content, you see basically the same thing. You see more beta cells in the mice which received the combo of EGF and gastrin, and you also see higher levels of beta cells in the mice where you waited 10 weeks after stopping the treatment, implying that there is some kind of regeneration going on. Now, the NOD mouse, the mouse model, this one's an autoimmune diabetes. It's mimicking type 1 diabetes, meaning that the immune system is constantly attacking the islets. So uh, it was very strange that despite the fact that the immune system is constantly attacking the islets, you see more more insulin and more beta cells at 10 weeks after stopping the treatment than at 5 weeks after, implying that there's almost like an immunological holiday, the immune system stopped attacking it. So the scientist who did the study, who uh, led the group, Dr. Rabinovich, being an immunologist, he wanted to see if maybe there is immunological protection going on as well, not just regeneration, 
but the pathological immune response are being stopped. And we've seen stem cells do this before. Uh, in some of, our, some of our other videos, we talked about mesenchymal stem cells inhibiting autoimmunity. So what they did is they took the um, normal diabetic mice and they transferred the splenocytes, the spleen cells. These contain T cells, and T cells are primarily what's causing diabetes or attacking the beta cells. So they transferred the T cells from a diabetic mouse into a mouse called a NOD skid mouse, which has no T, cell of its, T cells of its own. As you can see in this figure, when you transfer just 5 million splenocytes from a diabetic mouse into a non-diabetic NOD skid mouse, it gets diabetes, as you can see on the, on the y-axis. However, if you transfer cells for mice that are protected, mice that received EGF and gastrin, transfer 5 million of those cells with the bad cells, the, the diabetogenic cells from the normal mouse, you can see that diabetes incidence is inhibited. And this is dose dependent because if you add 30 million cells from protected mice, you see even less incidence in, uh, in time to diabetes. So what this study is saying is two very important points. Number one, that by giving EGF and gastrin, you can uh, induce new islet, islet uh, and beta cell, beta cell uh, neogenesis. And number two, that there's an immunological phenomenon going on with the activation of the endogenous regeneration. Now, many of you who watch, my, who watch these videos here on the Cell Medicine channel often ask, but what's the clinical implications and implementations? Well, this is one therapy which actually is used in the clinic under an experimental basis. The Phase 2A trial has been completed with positive results, and it's being developed by a company, Transition Therapeutics, and I believe with uh, Nova Nordisk as well, though I could be wrong. So, in conclusion, the investigation of different peptides and hormones and soluble mediators that you can inject is a very exciting area, not just because you have the possibility of augmenting your own stem cells, but also potent synergies that can be attained by using different stem cell sources and different stem cell therapy together with pharmacological agents that activate stem cells. Thank you.